Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another YouTube video. Today I'm going to go over two trades that I did make. Uh, one was on four stock. As you guys see behind me, that is a four Mustang Mach-E, 100% electric car. And I'm going to go over uh, four stock uh, in terms of the details of that trade. I did trade a first run day setup. I did not do as well as I wanted to. Uh, and I want to go over those details because there's a couple things that I do want to change. Now, one thing I want to mention, guys, when, when you take, do take a loss on a trade, uh, especially if it's the same, same setup and you start, you know, your, your statistics start not looking so great in that setup, you have to look at yourself and say, hey, you know what? Maybe there's something that I'm missing. I need to kind of go back and start back testing that setup to really look at the nuances, the nitty gritty of what is wrong and where am I making mistakes? Um, and that's where day traders need to do and must do in order for them to improve and become better at a setup. And of course, the ultimate goal is to be consistent in that setup. Um, and overall, I will, I am going to go be uh, going over my first red day setups and start back testing them because I did have a loss on plug on a first short, first red day. I did have a loss on, on Tesla. Uh, and it's actually, believe it or not, it's all based in similar sectors. Um, so it's the whole EV sector. It's a very, very uh, hot sector right now. Uh, and it's causing a lot of people well, to get squeezed out, a lot of short sellers. Uh, so I'm going to go over the details down below. If you guys have any questions, uh, please ask them down below in the YouTube comments. Now, I'm also going to go over another day trade, uh, FUBU, um, and, and a low-hanging fruit long, and I will go over the details as well. So don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel down below. Let me share my screen, and let's get started. <clears throat> all right, so um, first of all, of course, I want to go over Ford. The reason, main reason why I wanted to kind of uh, short Ford is because it's been definitely been uh, overbought <clears throat> uh, on the, um, not only in the stochastics, of course, over 80, but also in the Bulger band, bands are breaking above that. Uh, and actually, the main reason why I was very interested in a short today was because there was a, a blow off top candle yesterday. Um, and a blow off top candle pretty much looks like this. There's a, like a huge kind of like a squeeze in the open and it starts to kind of, you know, sell off and it breaks below the, the volume weighting average price, which is this, uh, this purple line, trend line, and it kind of just stays there. So that pretty much tells me that a lot of short sales have already gotten squeezed out and maybe uh, also longs are already kind of uh, start taking their profits and covering. And usually that causes the, the stock to just go do a little small pullback and go red for the day. Now it did go red for the day, but it didn't go red as far as, as like um, as much as I wanted to and what I was expecting. Um, and I did take a, a, a loss in that trade. But one thing I, I kind of want to cover is that um, overall, guys, when it comes to day, day trading, uh, the way you become consistent is by creating a consistent systematic process on every single day trade or setup you, you have. Um, I've actually done that successfully already for the low hanging fruit long and the low hanging fruit short uh, second day moves. And my statistics look amazing in those. Now, I've actually been day trading the first right day setup for a while already. And I've always had really good um, st statistics on that. But one thing I've failed to do is that I haven't really gone back to setup and really gone over the data to make that setup more systematic in terms of some of my approach. Um, and that is something that I've now come to grasp and say, hey, you know what? I need to do this. I know I've done it for the low hanging for short and low hanging for long, but I haven't done it for the first red day because my numbers overall have looked really well for those, those setups. The problem is guys, when you have a sector, a hot sector like the EVs uh, and it's pushing and also you have a really strong market, everything is up, everything is overbought and it continues to be overbought and it continues to trend. So just because it's overbought and it's over um, and it's trading above the Bulger band doesn't mean it's a short, doesn't mean it's not it's a red, first red day. So I personally have to back test that information and really go deep into the data and find a systematic approach that works uh, seven out of 10 times or more. 
Uh, and if I don't, I have to stop trading those type of setups because again, overall in the long run, even though I've actually had some really good wins on my first red day setups, like Tesla and Neo um, and ZM and Airbnb, you know, I, I've actually done pretty good. Some of the shorts I have, uh, I have I've, I've pretty much in the last couple, you could say, uh, weeks have actually kind of failed to make more money than what I've been I've been losing on those setups. So I had to go back and do some back testing. So that's something that as a day trader, in order for you to become consistently pros- profitable in a setup, you have to do guys. So I just wanted to talk about that. Uh, and that's very, very important. So uh, going back to the chart, um, again, uh, you know, one of the things that has changed uh, that makes uh, Ford a uh, different now is that it's part of of the same sector uh, that uh, Tesla is. You guys remember Tesla has joined the S&P 500. It's not part of the consumer discretionary sector and they're part of the automobile industry. So if you guys could see here in this uh, heat map, you have Tesla, you have GM, General Motor, and you have Ford in the same industry, in the same sector, in the same ETF. Uh, uh, you could say, uh, there you go, Spiders ETF, XLY. So what that means is um, if Ford is, if, if Tesla's trending, guess what? Ford is most likely going to trend. So is GM. Um, and not only that, but it gets it gets even more deeper than that because now you have fuel cell, fuel cell uh, hydrogen fuel cell companies like Plug who are also trending together and you also have S-Cell. And the really interesting thing about F-Cell is that they had a horrible earnings report. Fundamentally, their earnings was horrible. They like lost more money, twice as more money what the uh, analysts were expecting, but it's trending, it's moving. So the whole sector is, is very strong. And again, a lot, of ha- a lot of it has to do because we had a blue wave in terms of uh, the Democrats taking over the House, taking over the, uh, the Senate, and now the presidency with Biden. And they are very uh, environmentally friendly uh, towards uh, uh, policies. Towards, and so these, cap- these companies who are environmentally friendly, like F-Cell Plug and and Ford and, and, and uh, Tesla and GM are going to benefit from that. So a lot of investors are buying everything they can buy in these sectors. And, and you guys can see Tesla's consolidating very, very well. Um, and to me, it's going to make a move pretty soon. Uh, so, you know, in a way, forward, I mean, it looks like every single dip is being bought. So that is something that I wanted to mention. Um, and the, again, the reason why I consider it the first Reddit was because of yesterday's uh, blow of candle. Um, again, um, I, 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 again, I have to have a better approach in terms of when I short these. Um, I did, I was considering a uh, short here at the midpoint here at 1160, but it was upgraded by, by JP Morgan Chase. Uh, so it, it kind of started to sell up be, below the, the uh, volume wave average price. Um, I think the bad, bad, best place to get in in the short was probably right here around 1150s once it broke the, below this. But it was kind of like a very shoppy type of stock. It, it, the only really good um, downtrend we had was from like here 1150s from this uh, point to this point right here, a 20 cent move. Um, I was looking for bigger. I wanted for it to kind of break uh, 1160s, which is pre-market lows, uh, S, hit S1, even lower, but it didn't get there. You know, I, I had a really a decent trade on my first short uh, when it broke below this uh, pre-market level, 1145, and I ended up shorted here. Uh, I didn't cover here. I should have covered here after I saw this wick candle, um, but you know, go figure, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I did make some money, a little bit of money in this trade. I decided to short again, again, after this consolidation, like, again, I was still kind of short buys overall. Uh, so I shorted once it broke the downtrend, uh, but these levels, 11.35, it held and it squeezed me out and I stopped out. Uh, again, eventually this, the stock literally squeezed out, you know, right here. Uh, and I, I'm glad I was out of that trade, but overall, what I'm trying to say guys is that um, I need to go back then look at all the first Friday setups and I need to back test and find the most successful systematic approach where I win seven out of 10 times when it comes down to trading the first Friday setup. Like I said, the last couple of times I've traded a setup, 
I when I tried it when I tried to short plug Tesla and now a Ford and um, ironically they're in the same sector I've been getting squeezed out so maybe either I have to stay away from shorting that sector or I need to go back and back test so I, I think I'm going to start doing a little bit of both actually uh, so I just want to kind of mention that guys so now the other thing that I want to kind of cover um, I did trade uh, FUBU on a second day move uh, on a low hanging fruit long um, after ye yesterday had a really nice move. Uh, it was upgraded by a, um, a, an, an analyst. Uh, and today I was looking for a, a second day move uh, bounce out of the, the midpoint. Um, now the price was trading below the midpoint, but it was consolidating. And uh, the S1 was, I was one pivot was right here. So I felt like it was probably not going to make it just because of the low float that FUBU had and also the high short interest. There was over 65% short interest on FUBU. And I felt like there was going to be a squeeze at the open. There was a squeeze at the open. And I actually had some, uh, I was some shares to kind of cover at around uh, 25, uh, 30, uh, 30, 35, 25. I didn't get there. I was literally a couple cents off, like five or 10 cents off from hitting my target. I did have already an order already set um, and it literally pulled back. And the top thing about, about the food is, is, is the stock is so volatile is that it's kind of hard to know if it's going to hit. But again, I wanted to follow my process and wait until uh, the, uh, the uh, zombie hour to get out of the trade. And after this first pullback and I saw the second uh, move, I really felt like this is going to probably do it. But it just kept selling, kept selling. And I just like, I kind of put my stop uh, so I don't lose a, a you know uh, an excessive amount of money, and I just kept it, and I did get stop off for a small loss, nothing above what I was was willing to risk, which is nice. It's all based on risk management, uh, but I was very very close on getting that. So I think overall this setup is still solid. My stats still look really really good in the setup, even though I did take a loss in this one. Overall, my stats look good. So that was pretty much with Fubu. Again, guys, of the, the setup that I need to really kind of go back and test the double and back test more and really look at more data is the uh, first Friday. Um, and again, it could be just a fluke of the the EV sector, or um, or it could be uh, that I'm I'm I, I need to kind of go back and look at my data, see what's going on, because uh, I may may need to change the things. So. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video, guys. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel down below. Again, ask questions on the YouTube comments. I will answer all your questions and you guys will have, hear from me soon. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care.